In this video, I'm going to go over question 9 on assignment 14D, and this is how to calculate the pH at various points in a titration. So here's the question from Sapling. Calculate the pH of the solution after the addition of each of the given amounts of 0.0641 molar nitric acid to a 70 mL solution of 0.0750 molar aziridine. The pKa of aziridinium is 8.04. So um, this is a question where we're starting with a weak base and we're titrating it with a strong acid. So what we're going to go over will apply to a, a, a problem like this where we start with a weak base, and it will also apply to a problem where we start with a weak acid. We'll just have to do some of the steps kind of backwards because um, instead of a pKa, we'll have a pKb and so on. Um, but we'll, we'll look at this problem that starts with a weak base, and then I'll, along the way I'll show you how to do a similar problem with a weak acid. So the first one is, what is the pH of the solution after the addition of 0 mils HNO3? So, and the question is asking, what is the pH of the solution at various points? And so remember, a, a titration looks like this. Right? We have this really long tube that's full of our titrant. And down here, we have a beaker that is full of our analyte. So the analyte is what you are measuring. You don't know the concentration, you don't know the identity. There's something about the analyte that you want to know. And up here, this is the titrant. So the analyte is unknown somehow. Unknown is down below. But the titrant is known. Um, its volume is known because we have these measurements here on the side of the burette and so these measurements can help us determine the volume and its concentration is known. So the titrant is something that we know a lot about. And in a titration we drip titrant drop by drop into the analyte and we measure how much we've added. As we're doing this, so this is the volume of titrant. And as we add titrant, we measure the pH of the solution. And so we're measuring the pH of this solution. So we're measuring the pH of the analyte solution as we add titrant to it. So if we start with a weak base, that's what we're starting with in this problem, a weak base is going to have a high pH. So as the titrant will be an acid in this case, and my, my analyte is a base. So as I add titrant to my base, the pH goes down a little bit, kind of fast initially because acid is, has a low pH, right? So that's going to bring the pH down. And then at some point, it's going to go down very quickly. It's the inflection point. And then it'll keep going down, but it'll kind of flatten out a little bit. And the slope will become less steep. So if I start with a weak base, and I add drop by drop, I add my titrant, the pH is going to go down. And it'll go down in a curve that kind of looks like this. If I start with a weak acid, it has the same shape, but now my weak acid starts off with a low pH because acids are low. The first bit of titrant I add makes the pH go up fast, then it kind of goes slow for a while, and then it'll have a curve here maybe, and go here. So the shapes will be similar. They're not exactly the same, they're not exactly the opposite of each other, because depending on what the acid and base are, they're going to have different pKa's different pKb's, different strengths. So the curves will always have similar features, but they'll have inflection points at different pHs. Their uh, half equivalence point will be at different pHs. So this question is saying here, for example, at point one, I'll 
back on the blue curve. Z what is the pH after zero mils of HNO3? Well, zero mils is right here, right on the axis, right? So this is one, two, three, four, five, six. So here's one, right before we start, zero mils. Um, to keep going, what do we have here? Equal to half the equivalence point. Point three is half the equivalence point. The half equivalence point is right here. All right, and then we add some more. We go to four. Point five, equal to the equivalence point. Remember, the equivalence point is right here at the inflection point, the steepest part of the curve, right in the middle of that steep part of the curve. Um, and then we have point six, which is after the equivalence point, somewhere over here, six. That means four is somewhere in between three and five, here maybe, and two is somewhere in between one and three. So this is kind of what it's asking. What is the pH before I add any titrant? What's the pH after I add a little? What's the pH after I add a little more, a little more, a little more, and so on and so on? All right, so now let's start the math for this one. All right, I'm going to draw our little I guess I'll draw it over here. I'm going to draw our titration curve here in the corner just to remind us pH, volume, of titrant. All right, remember it goes something like this. We got start out high, and go down fast, and then kind of slowly, and then like that, and then a little bit more. All right. Part one, what is the pH when zero mils volume of titrant equals zero mils? Okay, so we need some information here. Right here at point one, I have a zero point zero seven five zero molar solution of a zeridine, which is a weak base. Well, if you didn't know what a zeridine was, and I would imagine you probably don't. How would you know it was a weak base? Well, one way that you could tell is, remember in the question here, it says that calculate the pH after the addition of each of the given amounts of HNO3. And you should recognize this. This is an acid, and it's a strong acid. So if I'm adding a strong acid to something, then I can imagine that this thing must be a base. Strong acid, this would be a base. If it's not a base that has OH, then it's probably a weak base. Um, and then I could also tell because it gives me the pKa of the conjugate acid, and this pKa is a pretty high number, so this is a pretty weak acid. So this is probably a pretty weak base. So um, if we didn't know what a zeridine was, we could see that this, the strong acid would be my titrant, so this must be my analyte. And if I have a strong acid, I'm likely titrating either a strong base or a weak base. And this doesn't look like a strong base. All right, so the question really is, how do I calculate the pH of a 0 0.075 molar solution of a weak base? So to do this, this is um, at the beginning of chapter 14. This is what we covered last term. So we make our ice table. I don't need to know what the weak base looks like. I can just say it's A minus. What does a weak base do in water? 
a weak base accepts an H plus. So it's going to become oops, H A. And it's one that takes the H plus away from water. Water turns into OH minus. So this is what a weak base does in water. The reason that this is a base in water is because it makes some OH. So how do I find the pH, step back for a minute, how do I find the pH of any solution? Negative log H plus, or H3O plus, right? So in this case, I'm going to make an ice table. And because this is a base, I'm not going to be calculating H plus. Since this is a base, I'm going to be calculating OH minus. So really what I will calculate here is the pOH which remember is just equal to the negative log of OH minus. If I have an acid, I calculate concentration of H plus. If I have a base, I calculate concentration of OH minus. And then 14 equals pH plus pOH. So if I know what the pOH is, because I know what the OH minus concentration is, then I also know what the pH is, because pOH um, equals uh, 14 minus pH. All right, so we've got to just complete this ice table and figure out how much OH minus I have and plug it in here. So how, uh, what's my concentration of a minus 0 0.075 molar? I don't care about water because it's a pure liquid. HA starts with zero, and this starts with zero before, I, before it dissociates. When it dissociates, I'm going to lose some of it, minus x. And when it dissociates, I'll gain some of these, plus x and plus x. Starting to look familiar from last term. And then, my, at equilibrium, I will have 0.75 minus x. And at equilibrium, I will have x and x. So I'm trying to calculate x. And what I have here, uh, I need the Kb, right? Because Kb equals products over reactants. So the products are H, A, and O, H minus, divided by the reactants, A minus, but I don't care about water because water is a pure liquid. It doesn't figure into the equilibrium. So Kb equals HA x times OH minus x divided by A minus 0 0.075 minus x. x squared over 0 0.075 minus x. So we need to know what Kb is. Remember in this problem we're not given Kb. In this problem we're given pKa of a zeridinium. And a pKa is a value that, we're, that is given for acids. This is not an acid, this is a base. This is a zeridine. A zeridinium is the conjugate acid of this. So they're just trying to make this tricky. Instead of just giving us the Kb value or the pKb value for this weak base, they're giving us the pKa value for its conjugate acid. So the pKa of the conjugate acid is 8.04. Now what are we going to do with that? pKa equals 8.04. Well, just like if I know OH minus, then I know pOH. And if I know pOH, then I know the pH, right? So pKa and pKb are also related. 14 equals pKa plus pKb. So if I know what the pKa is, then I know that the pKb equals 14 minus pKa. And in this case, that's 8.04. So, my 
calculator go? six so if I know what the pkb is pkb is 5.96 that's the pkb for this but I need to know kb so remember pkb putting the little p in front of something ph equals negative log of h poh equals negative log of oh pkb equals negative log All right, so the PKB is 5.96. So the negative log of the KB. So if I take 10 to the negative PKB, 10 to the negative log, And we get 1.096 times 10 to the negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 10 to the negative 6 equals the KB. So the short story is if we're given a pka i can find a pkb or i can find a kb or i can find a ka just like if i'm given the h plus i can find the ph or the poh or the oh minus they're all related mathematically so the pkb and the pka and the ka and the kb are all related mathematically too so if i need a kb in an equation and i'm only given a pka I can mathematically use these relationships, these relationships, to calculate what the KB would be. So now, finally, I'm ready to do my ice table. KB is 1.096 times 10 to the negative 6 equals x squared over 0 .0, 0 0.075 minus x. So this doesn't look like there's any way for us to avoid, um, you, mathematically, to avoid having to solve a quadratic. We can um, look to see if we can use the small x approximation. So remember, if x is small relative to this number right here, then if I have 0 0.075 minus a really, really small number, that's pretty much equal to 0 0.075, right? This really small number does not change this relatively big number very much if x is really small. So if x is really small and I can make some reasonable guess that it is, then I can ignore it and then this equation becomes a lot easier. So what determines how big x is? What determines how big x is is how big this number is. So remember if this number, if the initial concentration of HA divided by this number is 400 or greater, then that tells me that this number, this x over here, is going to be 5% or less than this. So mathematically, that's HA over KA. Oh, these are Bs. A minus over KB. If this is greater than or equal to 400, then we're fine. So let's see what our numbers are. We've got 0 0.075 is A minus divided by KB, 1.096 to the negative 6 power. <coughs> that equals 68,000. So, it's much, much, much bigger than 400. The point being that, yes, I can reasonably assume that this X is small. So I'll ignore it and erase it. And doing that makes my math a lot easier. Now I have... 1.096 times 10 to the negative 6 times 0 0.075, right? I'll 
bring this value up here by multiplying both sides by 0.75 and that gives me 8.22 times 10 to the negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 10 to the negative 8 equals x squared and then I just take the square root of both sides that tells me that x is 0 0.0002287. So finally, this question at point one is asking, what is the pH at point one? So to find the pH, I need to find OH minus. Here's OH minus. And this is a long process, but we're getting there. All right, so P O H equals negative log of O H minus. In this case, that happens to be the negative log of X because X represents O H minus. So P O H equals the negative log of 2.87 times 10 to the minus 4. One, two, three, four. So let's take the negative log here. POH equals 3.54. We're getting closer. So the pH equals 14 minus POH. POH is 3.54. Ten point four six. Okay, so again, let me just explain what we just did. The question is asking something that seems pretty simple. What's the pH? Well, that's easy. pH equals the negative log of H plus. All right, so if I have H plus, finding the pH is easy. If I don't have H plus, that's not, it's not always easy. So if I have a weak base, I'm not going to make H plus. I'm going to make OH minus. But if I have OH minus, I can calculate what the pH is through this series of relationships. So I set up my ice table here to calculate what the concentration of OH minus is. If I start off with this much weak base, I get X, plug X into the POH calculation to calculate what the POH is, and then subtract that the POH from pH, because 14 is pH plus POH, and that gives me the pH. All right. So at step one, all I have in solution is a weak base. So when I'm calculating this, uh, when I'm trying to figure out what the pH is, all I have to worry about is a weak base. How do I find the pH of a weak base? Just like this. At step two, it's a little bit different. Okay, step two says, what is the pH after the addition of 9.75 volume of HNO3 is 9.75 mils, and the concentration of HNO3 is 0 0.0641 molar. All right, oh, and the concentration of my weak base is, we're always going to reset. Every time we start, we're going to pretend like we haven't done anything yet. What I mean by that is we'll just use the same values that we're given, 0 0.075 molar A minus. All right, so here's the equation of what's happening now. I have A minus is iridine plus HNO3, I'm adding an, a strong acid, which is going to make HA plus NO3 minus. Right, because the A minus is a weak base, it's going to take this H away and make HA, and leave us with a conjugate base. 
let's make another ice table here. So when I add A minus and HNO3, they're going to react together. I have this concentration HNO3 and this concentration A minus. So generally when we work with ice tables, we write the concentration in there. And so we would think that the way that we're supposed to do this is go 0 0.075 and 0 0.0641 molar, molar. That is not right. You don't write concentrations in an ice table when we're trying to perform a chemical reaction. Because a chemical reaction, what I really want to know is how many particles of A do I have, and how many particles of B do I have, and in what way are they going to react, a one-to-one -one ratio. So whenever I'm trying to figure out how, what's going to be left after these react, I have to work with moles, not molarity. Remember, this is a stoichiometry problem. So we go from moles, or moles per liter, start that over. Remember, all the way back to chapter 4, we have molarity of A, we convert that to moles of A, and we convert that to moles of B, and we can convert that back to the molarity of B. So, or if we're starting with grams, we have grams of A, we convert that to moles of A, and we convert that to moles of B, and then to grams of B. Whenever we're doing stoichiometry, we always go into moles. We always work on a mole-to-mole -mole basis, because I want to know how many particles of this are reacting with how many particles of this. So I do not put molarity in my ice table. I put moles in my ice table. So I have to calculate moles. So what we have is my base, A minus, is 0 0.075 moles per liter. Um, and we have, according to our, uh, our problem here, we have 70 mil solution of azeridine. Notice that the 70 mils, we didn't care that we had 70 mils in the first problem. When I calculate the pH of that first solution, it doesn't matter if I have 10 mils or 20 mils or 70 mils or anything, the pH of, of a solution of this concentration will always be the same, regardless of how much I have. So I don't care about the volume in part A, but now in part B or, or part two of, of the problem, after I've added HNO3, now I have to know what effect is this volume of HNO3 going to have? Well, what volume of base did I have in the first place? How many particles do I have? So 70 mils of base, 9.75 mils of acid. So we have 70... I'm going to set this up a little bit differently. 70 mils, 1,000 mils per liter, and my solution is 0 0.0075 moles per liter. So mils and mils cancel, liters and liters cancel. And this will tell me how many moles of A minus do I have. 70 divided by 1,000 times 0 0.075 equals 0 0.00525 moles. So I can convert this again just to make that number easier to work with. In one mole, there's 1,000 millimoles. So if I do this conversion, then my I'll have millimoles times a thousand, and then my number is five point point two five millimole. Now a millimole is just one thousandth of a mole. And it's just the only reason I did that, the only reason I did this was so I could turn 0 0.00525 or 5.25 times 10 to the negative third moles into 5.25 millimole. And they mean the same thing because remember the little m milli means 10 to the minus 3. So 5.25 millimole is 5.25 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. 
It's just easier to work with this number. All right, how much titrant? H N O three. I have nine point seven five mils. Convert this to liters. And my concentration of my acid is zero point zero six four one moles of acid per liter. So how many moles of acid? Mills and mills cancel, liters and liters cancel. 9.75 divided by 1,000 times 0 0.0641 equals 0 0.00062, round up, 625 moles of acid. Or... Zero point six two five millimoles of acid. So millimoles of base, millimoles of H plus. So it really doesn't matter what NO3 is here, right? Because NO3 is going to be neutral. So really HNO3, I could just consider that as being how much H plus I have. So now that we have H N O three. So now that I know uh, how many moles I have, let's plug those numbers in. Five point two five zero point six two five point six two five moles moles, not molarity. It has to be moles. All right. So what do we do next? We have zero over here. Don't care about nitrate. So when these change, they're going to change by minus x, minus x, and plus x, right? But we actually already know what x is. I don't have to do an uh, ice table here to find out what x is. Because if I have strong acid, it's not going to wait around at equilibrium. At equilibrium, all of this will be used up. So when I'm doing a titration problem, I look at the two numbers I have, I look at my acid and my base, and I see which one is smaller. The smaller one is going to be completely gone at equilibrium. So this number is smaller, so at equilibrium, it's going to be gone. It's going to be zero. It will have completely reacted. It's a strong acid. It's not going to wait around at equilibrium. It will react. So if it reacts and I have 0% left, or I have zero left at equilibrium, then x is just 0 0.625. So it's the same over here. Minus 0 .0, 0 0.625. And here, plus 0 0.625. All right, so 5.25 minus 0.625 equals 4.625, 0 H and O3, and 6 or 0.625 moles of HA. So whenever we're doing a titration, at step one, I only had weak acid. I didn't have to consider any of this because I didn't add anything yet. It was just a solution of weak acid. But in step two, I'm adding two things together. When I add these two things together, they're going to react with each other. When they react with each other, the amount that I start with is going to change. How's it going to change? Well, it's one of them is going to be completely gone. So if this one is completely gone, it will also react with that much of this one. So at equilibrium, if I want to calculate the, the pH of the solution, I always have to know what is left at equilibrium. So at equilibrium, this is the key to solving the pH here. 
at equilibrium, I have a little bit of minus, a little bit of weak base. I have zero strong acid, and I have a little bit of weak acid. So I have weak base and weak acid. What is it called when I have weak base and weak acid? That's called a buffer, right? So I have a buffer here. And if I have a buffer, how do I find the pH of a buffer? pH of a buffer equals the pKa plus the log of the base over the acid. All right, so the pKa was given at the beginning, 8.04 plus the log of the concentration of base. So to find the concentration of the base, I need to take how many moles I have left. Moles 4.625 moles. And divide that by the volume of the solution. And the volume of the solution is I started out with my volume of base is 70 mils. My volume of H plus is 9.75 mils. And after I add them together, the volume of my solution is 79.75 mils. So what's the volume of my base? 79.75 mils, which is also 0.7975 liters. 0.0795 liters. That's the concentration of base. The moles of base divided by the volume of the whole solution. The acid and the base are in the same solution. So if the acid and the base are in the same solution, they have the same volume. So the concentration of the acid is 0.625 moles divided by the same volume, 0.7975 liters. So it's important to recognize that in this cal <coughs> excuse me in this calculation it's calling for the concentration of base. So whenever you see these brackets, the brackets mean molarity. We're supposed to put molarity in here. We're supposed to put molarity in here. That's why I put the brackets up here. It's, it means molarity. So um, I can't just leave these values as moles. Technically, I have to do moles divided by liters to make these values into molarity. But realize, recognize that when they're both in the same solution, and the volume is the same, that this divided by this just equals 1. So it's important to recognize when a concentration is being asked for, but it's also nice to realize at this point that since that concent since the volume is the same and both acid and base are in the same solution, so they share the same volume, the, that the volume divided by itself is just equal to 1. So I technically don't need to put those in there to get the right answer. So 4.625 divided by 0.625, take the log of this and add plus Eight point oh four. So my pH at this point is eight point nine zero nine. So this is at point two after I've added some acid. My pH is eight point zero nine. What was my pH before? Before I added any acid, the pH was ten point four six before I added any acid. Now it's 8.909 after I added a little bit of acid, 9.75 mils, right? And then we're at 0.2. At 0.3, now we're at the half equivalence point. So what does the half equivalence point mean? All right, so to talk about the half equivalence point, we have to think about what happens in a titration. 
at the beginning of a titration, if I draw my titration curve here, I'm just going to draw an acid, weak acid titration. At the beginning of my titration over here, I have 100% acid. And then at the equivalence point, right here, I have 0% acid. Come on, man. Acid. So at the very beginning of my uh, at the very beginning of my titration here, before the titration is started, before I've added any base, I have 100% acid. And then I add a little bit of base, and I have 90% acid, 80%, 70, 60, 50%. 40%, 30, 20, 10, 0%. And at this point, I have 0% acid. This is called the equivalence point. Or we could distinguish it by calling this the full equivalence point. At the full equivalence point, the reason I have 0% acid is because I start with weak acid plus strong base makes weak base plus water. Right? I start with a weak acid, I add my strong base, the OH- minus takes this H away and makes water, and when it takes this H away I'm left with A-. minus. So at the full equivalence point, let's say I start off with one mole, one mole of weak acid, and one mole strong base, zero, and I don't care about water. If I start off with one mole of each, then they're going to react with each other, minus one mole, minus one mole, plus one mole. So at equilibrium, I'll have zero HA, I'll have zero OH minus, and I'll have one mole of A minus. So when I'm at the full equivalence point, I have zero percent acid because my acid, the acid I started off with, is exactly neutralized by the amount of base I added. I started off with one mole of acid. I have now added one mole of base. So my acid and my base have completely reacted with each other. There's none left. I have a perfectly balanced reaction. And in fact, I have one mole of acid now, or, or excuse me, of, of, con of conjugate base. My weak acid turned into weak base. So at the full equivalence point, when this and this are equal, I have zero acid. At the half equivalence point, I have 50% acid. So here I have 100% acid, but I have 0% weak base. And here I have 0% acid, and I have 100% weak base. Right? 0% acid, 100% weak base. It's the only weak base left in that solution. So here at the half equivalence point, I have 50% weak acid, and I have 50% weak base. How does that happen? Well, let's consider, let's use this over here. What if instead of having an equal amount of base, what if I had only half as much base as acid? I start off with one mole acid, and I only have point, point 0.5 moles of base. Then I'm going to lose minus point 0.5 moles, minus point five moles. This will be zero. All my weak base is gone, or excuse me, all my strong base is gone. But I only have one mole minus 0.5, so I have 0.5 moles of weak acid left. And I start off with zero here, but I'm going to add 0.5 moles. So then at equilibrium, I have point, I'll make a point, point 0.5 moles. So if I only start off with half as much base as acid, then 
the base will still be gone, but I'll have half of my acid left. And where did the other half go? It got converted into base, so now I have half acid and half weak base. This is the half equivalence point right here. So at the half equivalence point, I have weak acid and weak base. I have a buffer. pH equals pKa plus log base over acid. If I have base and acid, weak base and weak acid, then I have a buffer, and I should use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation to find the pH, just like this. Well, <coughs> if I have the same amount of acid and base, then this becomes the log of 1. The log of 1 is equal to 0. So at the half equivalence point, the pH equals the pKa. Well, that's really easy. We already know what the pKa is. It is 8.04. So at the half equivalence point, the pH is equal to the pKa, 8.04. So we started with, when we, before we had added any acid, we were at 10.46. We added some acid, the pH went down to 8.909. We added some more acid, the pH went down to 8.04. Now at 0.4, we'll add some more acid. Point 0.4 says 77.1 mils. So the volume of HNO3 equals 77.1 mils. The volume of my base equals 70 mils. The concentration of acid, the same acid that we used before, just write it down again, uh, 0 or 0 0.0641 molar. My concentration of base is the same. We, again, we start off like as if nothing has changed, 0 0.075 molar base. All right, so here's our starting point for section four. So the only thing that has changed is the amount of acid. Everything else, these three values are the same that they've been in all of the other equations. The only thing that's different now is the amount of acid. So I'm adding A minus plus HNO3 makes H A plus N oops N O three minus. So I'm gonna make an ice table. I don't care about this. Um, we start off with zero H A initially. I have seventy seven remember I have to turn these into moles first, so let's do that. Seventy seven point one this is for HNO3, 77.1 mils. And 0 0.0641 mole per liter. All right, and then we'll do the set up the same thing for A minus. We actually don't have to. All right, we'll see that in just a minute. We're going to come out with the same number because, again, none of these numbers for A minus changed. So we'll have 0 0.075 moles per liter. So we calculate these values again, turn these into moles. 77.1 divided by 1,000 times 0 0.0641 equals 4.94 millimoles or it equals 0 0.00494 moles. I just put the milli there, remember, to make the numbers easier. And this equals 70 divided by 1,000 times 0 0.075. This equals 5.25 millimoles. Right, that's the same. This is the same number as before, 5.25 millimoles. That's always going to be the same, 5.25, because I'm not changing this. And I'm not changing this. I'm only changing this. So this number is going to change. Now instead of being 0.625, now it's 4.94. So the smaller number is going to be gone. Minus 4.94 plus 4.94. So at equilibrium, I have 4.94 moles of acid. And I have... 
looks like what? 0 0.31 moles of base left. These are supposed to be millimoles. Millimoles, millimoles. Okay. All right. So, uh, how do we find the pH of a solution when I have a little bit of acid and a little bit of base? I use the Henderson Hasselbalch equation. So, let's go down a bit. pH equals pKa plus log of base. over acid. pKa is 8.04. My base is 0.31. And my acid is 0.31 divided by 4.94. Take the log 8.04. pH equals 6.84. So I add a little bit more uh, acid and the pH goes down a little bit more, right? We were at 8.04, add some more acid, now it's at 6.84. All right, so let's go back to our original titration curve. We've now done 1 through 4. And all of these, we used the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation because all of these are in what we call the buffer region. So we can use that Henderson-Hasselbalch equation here. We can't use it here because we don't have any conjugate. We only have a pure solution of weak acid or weak base. Here at at 0.5, we won't be able to use it either. We have to do something different at 0.5. What we do at 0.5 is a lot like what we do at 0.1. At 0.1, I have a, a solution of 100% weak base. At 0.5, I have a solution of 100% weak acid. So here, I use an ice table with Kb, and here, I use an ice table with Ka. So 0.1 and 0.5 are going to be very similar see how we get our initial concentration of acid. Okay, 0.5. We are at the equivalence point, it says. Equivalence point. So I'm going to go through this relatively quick to show you that we're just repeating ourselves over and over again. HA plus NO3. And the only thing that's changing each time, ice, is the value of HNO3. This is 5.25. And now, this is 5.25. Because we're at the equivalence point. Minus 5.25. Minus 5.25. Plus 5.25. Start off with 0. So now these are 0. 0, 5.25 millimoles of acid. So now I have to make another ice table. When I have a solution of just weak acid, and I put that solution of weak acid, it's in water. Now I have an equilibrium set up where I make A minus plus H3O plus. So this is Ka. This is where I use Ka. I set up an ice table and I use Ka. Ka tells me the relationship in a reaction like this. So what I need in order for this to work is I need to know, and this is what's, I'm going to write this in a different color, need moles 
for this table. When I'm trying to figure out how my acid and my base are reacting, I have to convert them to moles first so that I can subtract and work on a mole to mole basis. But I, when I'm working with Ka, Ka equals the concentration of A minus times the concentration of H3O plus divided by the concentration of HA. And what is concentration? Molarity. So if I'm using a table with Ka and I'm trying to put these values in a Ka expression, this needs to be molarity. Need molarity for this table. All right, so I don't have molarity of HA. I have 5.25 millimoles of HA. So if I have 5.25 millimoles, then I need to figure out what is the volume of uh, HNO3. I know the volume of my base is 70 mils. But the problem here in sapling doesn't tell me what the volume of uh, HNO3 is. It just says the addition of a volume of HNO3 equal to the equivalence point. So we have to figure out what this is. It's obviously more than 77.1 mils of HNO3, and it's less than 86.7 mils of HNO3, but we don't know exactly how much it is. So how do we figure that out? Well, I know that I have 5.25 millimoles, and there's 1,000 millimoles in a mole, and the concentration of acid is 0.0641 moles per liter. So this will tell me how many liters I have. Five point two five divided by a thousand divided by point zero six four one equals zero point zero eight one nine liters, which is eighty one point nine milliliters. So what is the volume of my solution? Eighty one this is the volume of acid. So the volume of solution equals the volume of acid plus the volume of base. Well, the volume of acid is 81.9 mils. The volume of base is the same that I started with, 70 mils. 151.9 mils, the volume of my solution. How many millimoles of uh, acid do I have in that solution, or millim excuse me, millimoles of base? So the concentration of HA, come on, equals uh, 0 0.00525 moles, which is just 5.25 millimoles, right? divided by 151.9 mils, which is just 0 0.1519 liters, moles per liter. 0 0.00525 divided by 0 0.1519 equals 0 0.0346 molar. Phew. All right, so I have to use molarity in this ice table right here. I didn't know what molarity was. I only knew millimoles because I've been working with moles in these ice tables. To convert moles to molarity, I need to divide by volume. Well, what's the volume of the whole solution? Well, I added 70 mils of base and 81.9 mils of acid. So then I can use that to calculate the concentration, 0 0.0346. And finally, we can plug that in up here, 0 0.0346 
molar. Zero, zero, minus x, plus x, plus x. And now I don't know what x is. Up here I do know what x is because something is going to be zero at equilibrium. And if something's going to be equal, zero at equilibrium, I just look for the smaller number up here. So I already know what x is in this ice table for the titration on a mole per mole basis. But when I'm trying to figure out um, the, what x is down here using a Ka expression, I don't know what x is. That's the point of using this kind of ice table. Instead of knowing what x is, I know what Ka is. And so I can calculate x. So 0, oops. 0 0.0346 minus x, x, x. We know that the pKa, let me get rid of this here. We know that the pKa is 8.04. So we know that the Ka is 10 to the negative pKa, which is 10 to the negative 8.04. So 10 to the negative 8.04 equals A minus, which is x, times H3O plus, which is x, right? I'm just doing the Ka, this Ka expression right here, moving it down here, xx divided by 0 0.0346 minus x. All right, here's my Ka, 10 to the minus uh, 8.04. A minus is x. H3O plus is x. And HA is 0 0.0346 minus x. So here's my Ka expression, and I'm trying to solve for x. So how do we simplify this? If this x is small, I can ignore it. Is this x going to be small? Yes, because this is a very, very small number for Ka. So I'm sure that this number is small enough that this x will be a very small number. And if, it, if you're not sure, you can do 0.0346 divided by this and make sure it's bigger than 400. But I'm sure that it's going to be bigger than 400, so let's just ignore it. Now we can simplify this math, and let's solve for x. So 0 0.0346 times 10 to the negative 8.04. Take the square root of this. And x equals 1.78 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative fifth. And what does x represent in this case? x represents H3O+. plus. So how do I find the pH of this solution? Well, to find the pH of a solution, it's not a buffer. I need to know how much H plus or H3O plus there is. So that's just x, 1.78 times 10 to the negative fifth. So now the pH equals 4.75. So our pH was at 6.84 at the, at the, before the equivalence point, and now at the equivalence point, our pH is at 4.75. So it keeps going down. All right, so we've got one more that we have to do, 86.7 mils HNO3. That's our last point. And remember, just to remind you where we are on the curve, way, 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 way back up here. 0 0.6 is way down here on the curve. We, we've already passed the equivalence point. I've reached the bottom.
say it was 4.75. All right, finally, point six. Volume of HNO3 is 86.7 mils plus the volume of my base, which is 70 mils. Concentration of HNO3 didn't change, 0 0.0641 molar. And the concentration of base didn't change, 0 0.075 molar. Okay, so now we need to figure out what's left in the solution. If I'm past the equivalence point, then I know that there's no more A- minus left. All the A- minus is gone. If uh, I'm past the equivalence point, that means that if I write, let's see, H N O three plus N O three minus. So let's see what we've got here. I've got eighty six point seven mils. And we start with the same 5.25 millimoles that we always have here. We didn't change those values for base. All right, so 86.7 divided by 1,000 times 0 0.0641 equals 5.56 millimoles. 5.56. So now, finally, the base becomes the smaller number. It's 5.25 plus 5.25, 0, 5.25, and minus 0 0.00525. All right, so what I have left at equilibrium now is no weak base, it's all gone, a little bit of weak acid, and a little bit of strong acid. I know what that little bit of weak acid does to the pH already. That little bit of weak acid makes the pH equal to 4.75. So the question is, what does this strong acid going to do to the pH? So to determine that, I have to figure out what is the concentration of H plus, H3O plus. Well, I don't know exactly what the concentration is, but I do know how many moles I have. 0 0.307 moles. And I do know what the volume of the solution is. 86.7 plus 70 divided by 1,000. 0.1567 liters. All right, this is moles of, of H plus divided by the liters of the solution. Okay, 0 0.307 millimoles actually, right? So, just so we don't confuse ourselves here, 0 0.307 millimoles is 0 0.0003 307 moles. So 0 0.000307 divided by 0.1567. Take the negative log of this and the pH of our final solution equals 2.71.